Hello again. In our last video, we kicked off the discussion of linear regression through this series of PowerPoint slides. We introduced a simple example of linear regression, which is univariate linear regression. And we talked about model representation. Essentially, we gave a particular example where housing prices were predicted from housing sizes. So if you knew the square meter size of a house, you use that information to predict its price. So let's go on to the next part, which is the cost function. Uh, if we go, let me see if I go to the right place. Where's the right slide? Uh, so I should be able to go to See all slides? I want to go to slide. Well, here, this was the summary. Uh, we fit a line to the housing data, which related price to size. The line was determined by two parameters, the intercept and the slope. And the intercept and the slope determine how well the line fits, so we want to find these. So how do we determine the best intercept and slope to use? So, so we'll talk about cost function. All right, so we have three copies of the same data, and we're going to show three different lines. Now, what is shown here is the, the line, the fitting line, and the dotted line shows the vertical distance from that line to the actual previous data point. All right, so here you can see this, this is a negative distance, negative distance, positive distance. Now here you can see that all these distances are negative, this, this prediction is actually very bad because the prediction for this, for this particular size would be way up here above three, but in fact, the actual price is below two. So this is a very poor prediction. Here you can see that these dotted lines are very short. That means the errors are small. Uh, this indicates a good fit. Now, the other thing to notice is that some of these errors are positive and some are negative. Some go up and some go down. So, for instance, if I summed up all these errors, the positive errors may cancel the negative errors. But that doesn't mean the line is a good fit. It just means that some errors are positive, some are negative. So, the sum of errors is not a good measure of how good the line is a fit. We'll have to use some other measure. So, given the points in the training set, we want to choose theta 0 and theta 1, such that the line's predicted prices are close to the actual, pro actual price. Right? Predicted prices are the h of theta. The actual prices are the y. The difference between them is this dotted line. Okay? So, given the points in the training set x, y, choose theta 0 and theta 1, such that the line's predicted prices are close. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So first of all, we want to compute the distance between h theta of x and y for all the data points. Okay. Right. So here we have h theta of xi minus yi. That's the difference. If I go back to the previous slide, h theta would be the orange value and y would be the blue value. So it would be orange minus blue. So in this case, the difference is positive. In this case, orange minus blue that would be negative. Okay. All right. Now, there's a slight error here. We should be having absolute values. Because if you're talking about distance, distance is typically thought of as positive. Right. As I mentioned before, if you just take this difference and you have some positive differences and some negative differences, then you can have the, the differences add to zero and still have a very bad fit. And we saw that example here. If I add up these differences and these differences, the sum will be very close to zero, but the line is not a good fit. So really, there should be absolute value here to denote the positive distance. Right? We really want to minimize the sum of positive distances, not just the sum of distances. Right? So that would be a measure of how good the line is fitting. Now, it turns out, for mathematical reasons, 
instead of using the sum of distances, we use the sum of square different distances. One reason that is is because the absolute value in mathematical terms is not a very nice function. If you remember what the plot of absolute value is, I drew it right here, you can see the plot, it has a corner at zero. So uh, that means that there's no derivative of this function at zero. It's a, not a nice function. However, if I drew the graph for, x, y, for uh, uh, y equals x squared, it's a nice smooth function that has a nice derivative at every point. So this one is y equals x squared. And it just turns out that the mathematics works out very nicely if we try to minimize the sum of squares of the distances rather than the sum of the absolute values of the dis distances. That being said, there are practical cases where you would want to minimize the sum of absolute value distances. And that's a different mathematical problem. But the classical least squares problem, um, the plus classical regression problem, minimizes the sum of squared distances. Okay, so let's keep going. Whoops, let me get rid of the junk on here. Can I get rid of my uh, junk? Okay, there we go. So, now, if you're minimizing this function, if I'm finding the value of h theta, where h, remember h theta is determined by two parameters, theta zero and theta one. So this quantity is actually a function of theta zero and theta one. Now suppose I find theta zero and theta one that makes this quantity as small as possible. Well, then if I multiply the entire quantity by one over m, that's still going to give me the smallest possible value of this quantity, right? Because if I found a smaller value of this quantity, then I could take one over m and get a smaller value of this quantity. These two quantities move together. Okay, I made a quick illustration here. If my original h theta is a function that looks like this, then the minimum value would be here. Now, if I take one over m times h theta, it's going to have the same shape, but it will be at a different height. So if the first function is minimized here, the second function will also be minimized at the same location. We're interested in the value of theta that minimizes this function. All right, so minimizing this function is the same as minimizing this function. All right, and I can even go farther, I can take half of that, that will not change the solution. Okay, just, um, so this is a general principle that multiplying an objective function by a constant, or uh, multiplying, I should say, cost function. Cost function is something kind of sometimes called objective function. Multiplying a cost, fun cost function by a constant does not change the solution that minimizes the cost function. Okay, let me get rid of my junk from the slide and we'll go on. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right, so here. So, the smaller this value is, the smaller the sum is, the better the fit. Okay. The larger it is, the worse the fit. That's why it's called a cost function. We want to have a small cost, not a large cost. Remember that h itself has this mathematical form, so we can plug this mathematical form into this expression. So this is the expression we're trying to minimize. Now, you may have seen minimization problems in calculus. This is actually a standard calculus problem for minimizing a function of two variables, theta zero and theta one. Now, we're not just going to solve it using calculus, we're going to show some numerical approaches for solving this. Uh, sometimes calculus is not adequate in practice for various reasons. So, the cost function, which determines how well the line fits the data, depends directly on theta zero and theta one. So, in mathematical terms, it's a function of theta zero and theta one. This function is often denoted as j. And it's also called the squared error function, or, or the mean squared. Sometimes it's called the mean squared error. Okay. So here's the mathematical expression uh, without plugging in the particular expression for, for h. 
And here's the expression for linear regression. Right. So this is, mathematically, we're going to focus on this in linear regression, how to find theta 0 and theta 1 to make this as small as possible. Okay. So uh, here we're just repeating what we said. We want to find the uh, best theta 0 and theta 1 for a given training set. Right? The x and y's are labeled data, so we call that the training set. And we want to find theta 0 and theta 1, for which the cost function, j, has the smallest value. So we're minimizing j. The explicit expression for j is the sum of squared, the, the mean sum of squares, or one half the mean sum of squares. And then for linear regression, the h has this form. Now the cost function is going to depend on the values of theta 0 and theta 1. So let's take a look at how that dependence works. Let's look first for the case when theta 0 equals 0. Then we're only dealing with one variable. Right? Then h theta of x is a line that passes through the origin. Right? If the y-intercept is 0, then the line must pass through the origin. So changing theta 1 will change the slope of the line. If theta 1 is large, it will have a steep slope. If theta 1 is small, it will have a shallower slope. If theta 1 is 1, then it's just right. Okay, so the cost function now only depends on theta 1. So for each value of theta 1, we will generate a value of the cost function. Since I know xi and yi, I can compute this. Now, if you have a large data set and with many xi's and yi's, this may take a long time to compute. And that's why you use a computer. Right? But this is mathematically computable if you're given the data xi and yi. Okay. All right, so here's a particular example. You can see in this case, this, this data uh, seems to lie along a line with slope, with a particular slope. In fact, it looks like the slope is 1 because you can see uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So uh, just looking at this particular data set with three points, in this case, the optimal theta 1 should be 1. But for different values of theta, you're going to get, I'm sorry, for different values of theta 1, you're going to get a different value of the cost function. And it turns out for this particular case, your cost function looks like all right, in this, all right, so here's one particular example. If I have a theta 1 is equal to 2, which is too big. Uh, if I sum up the, these squared deviations, I'll get a value of close to 2.5. So I represent that on this axis where theta 1 is the parameter that I'm trying to optimize, and j is the cost function. So as I change theta 1, the value of j will change. So theta 1 is 2, right? So let's try theta 1 equals 1.5. Now that should be a little bit better because we know the exact answer is 1. And you can see that in fact the values are closer to the value here. So let's see where that shows up on this scale here. Turns out it's just 0. 0.5. If I take this distance squared plus this distance squared plus this distance squared, it works out to be about 0. 0.5. All right, let's try now. Theta, is, theta 1 is 1. Now, if theta 1 is 1, as we saw, that's basically right on the money. So when theta 1 is 1, my cost function is going to be 0. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if my theta 1 is too small, I'm going to start having larger deviations again. So you can see, and the smaller it is, the larger the deviations. All right, that's quite bad. Okay, so you can see we have a parabolic shape, which is not surprising because the function involves the square of a quantity. So this is a sum of squares, so it's not really surprising that we have a parabola. And what we want to do is identify the smallest point. Now in this case, we could identify visually that the best point would be at slope equal to 1. The other uh, special thing about this example was that there was a particular slope that gave zero cost. In general, that's not going to be the case. 
That's only going to be the case if all of your data lies on the same line. But certainly that's not true in general. All right, so this is the cost function as a function of theta 1 when we assume that the parameter theta 0 is 0. Right. Now that was for that particular data set. Of course, for a different data set, you're going to get a different cost function. All right, now let's go to the case of two parameters. So what does it mean to minimize the cost function? And here again, we want to represent it graphically. Now, my fitting function, my h, my hypothesis, is a linear function. But that doesn't mean the cost function is linear. The cost function is going to depend on these two parameters, but it's, you can't uh, directly infer the cost function from these lines. You have to compute it based on the data. So the fun cost function is j, and j is computed as the sum of squares, square sum of square deviations, uh, divided by 2m. And of course, just like we said before, this h, this hypothesis, has a linear form. Right. Now it turns out that when you do that for a linear, for this case, in fact, for this particular linear case, and you plot j as a function of theta 0 and theta 1. Well, to plot j as a function of theta 0 and theta 1, you need to use three dimensions because you need one dimension for theta 0, you need one dimension for theta 1, and you need one dimension for the actual cost function. So here, uh, using software, is a plot of the cost function as a function of theta 0 and theta 1. Now we saw before that in this case the optimal value is when theta 0 equals 0 and theta 1 is equal to 1. In fact, we can know that's optimal because you can't possibly get a cost function less than 0. So if you obtain a cost function of 0, you know you've reached the best possible uh, aspect. Now, so if we were try trying to find the best point, it's hard to see here, but theta 0 is 0 here. And theta 1 is 1. So there would be a point right here. Let me see if I can draw it. All right, hopefully that is showing pretty much where the point would be. You can see theta 0 equals 0, theta 1 equals 1. It's just about where that function is minimized. Right? And at that, that point, you can see this surface uh, touches the, the xy plane, which indicates that the cost function is 0. Now we can do a contour plot of a uh, representation of the same uh, graph. You can see here the colors here correspond to the same colors here, but we're sort of collapsing this down into a topographic map. We're not showing the third dimension, we're just showing lines of constant color, right? You can see this is kind of bluish region, this is yellowish region, this is red region. If we just drew, drew a line in the middle of the yellowish region, that would be this yellow line here. So these are contours, and you can see the contours are getting smaller, 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 until at the very center we have a zero. So this cost function is this shape for this particular data. Now for other data, you're going to get another shape. So for instance, this using software, this is the shape of the cost function for this data. Uh, there's no uh, numbers indicated on these, but these are all contours, and the bluer the color, the smaller the uh, cost function. So we can see that the best cost function is right in the middle there. That's kind of the lowest valley for the cost function. So it's something like uh, theta 0 is close to 200, and theta 1 is close to, it's a little bit less than 1. So we can read that off from here. Now, of course, mathematically, we want a way to find this uh, exactly, and not just read it off of a graph. But the graph is helpful in showing how this works. Now, how does this shape here relate to this shape here? Well, you can try some particular examples. Suppose, for instance, I did 0, 0. That would be the line down here. That's really quite bad. I can see here the slope is fairly close to 1. So, if I choose theta 1 equal to 1, as long as I uh, am fairly close to the right y-intercept, I'm going to get some good results. Now, what is the meaning of this very squished shape of these, this ellipse? The first ellipse that we saw was fairly 
uh, round or equal for both uh, the x and the y. Why do we have a squished ellipse here? Well, what this is saying is that if I uh, decrease theta zero, I can increase the theta one in order to compensate. So for instance, if the, I know that the right theta zero is down here. It's probably about, um, it should be about uh, less than 200, 100 and something. So let me show the picture here. I'll pause for a minute and show some pictures. 